Hey everybody, Fifth Horseman here. Playing more Kerbal Space Program, and we are not going to, to Duna today. Sorry about that. We are instead going to start Carbonite operations. I'm going to disable this tooltip because I find it very annoying. Um, this is a multi-stage process here. There is a lot... Actually, uh, there's a lot to concern myself on the launch here because my atmospheric efficiency is too high. Uh, there is a lot to do to, to get a Carbonite base launched with the resources I have, um, in particular with the small launch pad that I'm launching from. This is basically the biggest thing I can launch. Um, it doesn't have any people in it. It can barely make it to orbit. What I'm doing here is I'm launching this thing, and this here is what's going to end up in orbit. And then I'm going to launch up two refuelers. They're going to attach to the sky to fill this tank up and also stick to the side and give it um, give it even more... Uh, I'm going to keep this guy mostly equatorial here. Uh, going to stick to the side and give it more... Whoa, ability to turn here. <laughs> um, give it even more fuel. Then we're going to take this thing to moon, and then we're going to land it. And the people who are going to do that are none other than Jeb, Bill, and Bob. And when this whole thing's over, you'll see why they're the ones doing it. Don't worry. Any, everybody who's, who's submitted your names, you are on the list. You will be included in the crew, just not in the immediate near future. But nobody's on this ship. We're actually going to, after we get this thing safely into orbit, we are going to um, launch them up into it and, and get them going that way. It's just, everything is so tight. I, I wanted the option, if I screwed up, to not have to uh, recover them. Uh, I wanted to, to live with my mistakes, as the case may be here. Yeah, but this, this ship was very hard to, to design. I had to... Uh, shut down the gimbals on these engines because the center of mass is back here and these engines would completely freak out. I also had to um, add solar panels up here because these solar panels are actually being blocked by the, the engines, but I couldn't have them going this way because then they would clip into, into this area here, which would be bad. Also, we've got the carbonite drill on the bottom. We've got carbonite tanks here and we have two regular fuel tanks here so we can convert this carbonite using the converter here into carbonite and regular fuel and then pump it from the converter into the fuel tanks <laughs> like you have to do. Anybody who's used cathane knows what I'm talking about when it comes to fuel lines. I'm also bringing along a lot of uh, Kerbal Attachment System fuel pumps, which is something I have attached, or something I've installed into this game, is uh, Kerbal Attachment System to go along with everything else that I've put <laughs> into this thing, which is a lot. This guy barely has the thrust to get into orbit. Notice his thrust to weight is 0.77. And we're almost actually at the point where we are thrusting sideways. So I'm going to pull my nose up here a little bit so that we never pass our apoapsis. I think if we pass our apoapsis, we've basically lost this battle. Um, this is going to be boring. I'm not going to make you sit through it. But if this guy doesn't get into orbit, I will show it to you. Okay, our periapsis is almost over the surface here. We are basically just at, sitting here at our apoapsis, burning the most we can forward. Now we're going to get our apoapsis up to probably about 90 or so, maybe 100. I think 100's a good number because that'll allow us to rendezvous with it a little bit easier once we get our other ships into orbit uh, lower than that. And obviously 100 isn't enough because of the fact that Air resistance is going to knock it down, so let's make it 110 and see how that works. Yeah, that's not even close to enough, so let's go ahead and burn it up again. Let's go up to maybe 120. Okay, that obviously wasn't enough, so I'm going to go back up to 110. Problem is, even though we're way well up into the atmosphere, we're still in the pretty rarefied atmosphere. But according to Kerbal Engineer, we've got over a grand of Delta V left, so I'm not really concerned that we're going to run out of fuel. At least I'm not as concerned as I was on the ground. <laughs> and now that we're climbing up into the far more rarefied atmosphere, our 
Declining apoapsis is declining at a much lower rate. The reason I'm doing all this instead of going to Duna is our Duna window is 189 days away. And we got to get the at least the, the scanning satellites up there, uh, up to Moon and Minmus, so we know where the carbonite is when it comes time to, uh, to drill it. So we might as well get this thing going um, now just to make it easier for us in the future. There we go, 104 by 108. That's good enough for me, and that's good enough for this ship. We're gonna we're gonna point him back at the uh, the sun here, and then we're gonna leave him alone. That, I'm just pointing him towards the sun so that he has uh, he'll have power when we come back to him later. Now for the next thing to launch is one of the refuelers. And before I launch this guy, I'm going to show you another thing that I have installed, and that is the Contracts Plus window. I love this mod. It, uh, it allows you to have a lot more control over what you see as far as the contracts are concerned. You can ignore the other, the other issue. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up, though, is because we uh, on this ship I have attached an ion engine because somebody wanted to test it in orbit between 81 and 86,000 meters, which we're going to be in. So we're going to try to launch this guy to just about an 81,000 orbit uh, in order to test this thing, in order to oh, free up a contract so we can we can do something later. Um, yeah, I love this thing. And you can even see the payouts. We're going to get 112 science for that. We're going to get uh, 400 funds. Um, we're going to get 196. I'm sorry, we're going to get 400. Is that rep? I don't even know. Yeah, we're going to get 400 rep. And then we're going to get uh, 196,000 uh, funds for it. So definitely worth bringing along um, if we can afford the fuel, which I think we can. This guy's a little bit harder to control. Um, I didn't bring a reaction wheel along with him. And he has these crazy um, solids on the side. And he's also quite shaky, which is a little bit disturbing. It wasn't this shaky when I launched it before. But with any luck, things will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, when I was simulating it before, I should say. But with any luck, things will be okay once we uh, once we get rid of the solids. This is a bit unconventional of a rocket because it's got these two solids here that's helping push up other solids that I'm gonna that I'm gonna ignite when I drop these here in a second. You also notice those fell away perfectly straight. That's because I have installed a couple of. Uh, uh, the stock fixes. Uh, it's another mod. Uh, there's there's a couple stock problems that have been fixed by a mod, and th there's a link to it in my in my page as always. Um, but uh, y you're gonna want to install that if you if you're having a lot of problems with stuff smacking into your central stack during uh, liftoff here. Speaking of liftoff, I should probably be paying attention and do my gravity turn. Yeah, this guy doesn't have the authority to turn very well. <laughs> this low in the atmosphere, which is causing our apoapsis to get a lot higher than it should, which could be a problem later, but we are turning successfully here. There we go. With this engine cranked up more, then we're good. I'm just going to put this thing right on the horizon. Things, it could be better, but this is just the way it's going to have to be. We're all, because our apoapsis is already at 70 almost. There go those engines. I'll, I'm going to burn my apoapsis up to about 80 before I stop burning here. There we go. 85. That should bring us down to about 80 by the time we... Oh, maybe not even that far. Hopefully we can get this thing into orbit. We've only got a grand of Delta V. Well, that says it's only going to take 700, so looks like we got it. Probably should have put a couple batteries on this guy now that I'm looking at it. Because he only has one electric charge in him. <laughs> And I don't even know if he has reaction wheels, to be honest. Let's go ahead and turn on the RCS jets just to kind of get him aimed at his maneuver node here. There we go. And we could probably test this ion engine now. If we look here, between 81 and 86, we are there. So if I go into my staging, it is the next thing to go. Let's go ahead and test it. And we just got it. So we got we got that. That much is taken care of, which is awesome. Okay. Now we have very little bit of fuel here in order to get this guy where we need it to be, which is the station. 
Looks like it's going to be about, I don't even know how many orbits that is, but it's going to be about a day from now. Not a big deal. We can tweak this here with the burning up and down to get this a fairly close encounter. Nine kilometers, eh, it's not the best, but it's definitely not the worst. There we go. Ended up using Precise Node to get it right. I'm not sure what the rules are for when you can and can't drag this thing, because I've, I've been able to sometimes and sometimes I can't. Um, but we got it, basically. We're, we're good to go here. And this is basically the same ship as we launched before, except for I did actually add a couple batteries, and I also added a reaction wheel to him, so he'll be a little bit easier to control, especially when we're doing the gravity turn. Okay, things were a bit easier to, to control with this guy. However, he still uh, didn't quite make the, the gravity turn I wanted him to. Um, he doesn't have to test anything in orbit, so I'm just going to get him up to about 75 here. And then we're going to coast him up. And then burn him into orbit. There we go. 1.7 kilometers. That's definitely good enough for me. And this is in a day and zero hours. Sadly, these are, well, they're, they're like 40 minutes apart, so we shouldn't have to worry about them, uh, uh, well, 30 minutes apart, so we shouldn't have to worry about them conflicting with each other. So now, it is not time to launch the people. Now it is time to launch the actual scanning satellite. And that is this guy, and to keep costs down, here's the, here's the carbonate scanner on the top, I believe that'll also scan for ore, but to keep costs down, we have um, just solid rocket boosters going all the way. So we're going to turn on his control systems, and we are going to hit the space bar. And I have throttled these things way down, um, just to keep him from going way over, uh, uh, whatever you call it, uh, atmospheric efficiency. And as we're rising up through the atmosphere here, we're high enough up that we can extend the solar panels so he doesn't run out of power. That would be embarrassing. We're also going to turn him sideways so that not only is up, up on my nav ball the way I like it, but the sun, which is along this plane here, will always be perpendicular to these, uh, to these solar panels. Yeah, we're not seeing any resources on the overlay. That's another mod I installed. Um... And I don't exactly know what to do about this. Nope, there's our slope map. So that worked. Here's our biome map. But I was really expecting, when I went to the resource map, to see whether or not there was uh, carbonite there in the old map here. It might be just that there is no carbonite on the surface of carbon in this area. But now we need to get this guy to the moon. And we want our orbit to be uh, polar when we get to the moon. There we go. 121 by 122. Perfect. Um, except for the fact that we're absolutely getting absolutely no readings whatsoever. And if I turn tooltips on for this thing, it is telling me how much carbonite is in different areas, sort of. Yeah, it's, it's telling me over here that there's carbonite, and it's telling me that here there's 3.7% carbonite, but it's not showing it on the map, which implies to me that I have no idea what I'm doing. But we're going to go up here anyway. Obviously, this crater is a really good place to mine for carbonite. Um, there's none in this huge crater here, which is kind of sad. Um, this crater is pretty good, and it's equatorial. Um, this is there's a uh, there's a moon arch right here. So if we land in this like plane here, south of the moon arch, we could get we could get a good five percent or so. Um, so we'll probably go here. Um, and I think just the act of getting the satellite in orbit is what's getting us our ability to see this. But I don't know, because I don't know anything about this mod. <laughs> We're learning together, as we always do. Um, yeah, there's no carbonite here. It looks like the best place to go... Yeah, the best place to go is this crater with its 5% or so. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that. Aha! 
it does just show you everything. Now, here's the question. I didn't go to Minmus. So if I just go to Minmus, is it going to show me what it has? The answer is yes. So I don't need to scan these things, um, which is kind of sad. I kind of wish you had to. I don't know what that scanner, what the purpose of that scanner is. But uh, knowing that I don't have to scan it is going to make things easier. <laughs> um, I don't know how long this episode's going to be, but... I think I'm done. Um, I've been playing for quite a while. <laughs> so sorry if this episode's only 10 minutes long. And I'm also sorry if I can't edit out and it's boring and it's a 20 minutes long. But uh, I hope you learned a little bit about Carbonite. I think I might have. And next episode, we'll, we'll launch Jeb, Bill, and Bob up to the station. We'll also get um, the... Oh, our, our fuelers are two minutes away. Let's go ahead and do that. We missed one of them, apparently. While I was screwing around, I wasn't paying attention to this guy's necessary, uh, this guy's need to dock. Yeah, this is the, this is the second one. Oh, this is the first one I launched, but he's the second one to need to do his burn. We missed the first one. Not a big deal. We're not, we're not on any sort of time crunch here. It's just a little annoying that I'm going to have to do this several times. Oh, and we're going to run out of electric charge. I should have kept the engine running. I forgot. He, he doesn't have any electric charge, and he can't do this in the dark. This is just a bunch of fail. Okay, are we able to do this next orbit? Probably not even remotely close. We'll have to do it, like, right here. But let's go ahead and burn him now. 2.2 kilometers. 2.8 is going up. So I'm going to turn on the RCS, and we are going to back up a little bit. 2.4, 2.2. Looks like that's the maximum we're going to be able to do is 2.2. I don't want to use up tons of monoprop on this guy because he's got to dock with this monoprop. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to end it. Next episode, I'm going to get this thing docked. Uh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the other ship. I'm gonna gonna find his his good docking position. Uh, I'm gonna set him up to dock, and then we're gonna launch Jeb, Bill, and Bob up to this thing so they can head off to uh, Moon to set up the Carbonite base. Hope you enjoyed watching this. I, I enjoyed playing it. Um, just a little burned out. I am Fifth Horseman, and I will, as always, talk at you later.